Hi there, and welcome to Polygon Flow's first showcase of Graphen, a visual scripting software built for artists. We'll be exploring Graphen and its Maya integration, and we'll close on some notes that are relevant to tech artists and programmers as well. To help us get started, let's explore the most basic tool that hard surface artists keep making all the time. Select hard edges and bevel them. First, let's hit space in the Graphen viewport and type get selection. This node allows you to work on whatever object you have selected in the Maya viewport. Next, we create a Get Hard Edges node, which does exactly what it says. And just to test the result, we create a Set Selection node. If we hit the Play button or Ctrl R, you'll notice that the hard edges are now selected. To bevel the object, let's hit Space again and write Bevel. Let's connect this node to Get Hard Edges. And that's it! You just finished your first tiny but useful tool in Graphen. Before we move on, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things about this graph we just built. First of all, it can be shared online or sold on platforms like ArtStation and Gumroad to all Graphen users. Any graph you create is yours and only yours, and the output of the graph is pure Python code. The performance of the Maya context pushes Maya to its limits, giving you results that were only accessible to senior developers and tech artists before. You can also build tools like this just as easily for Blender, Unreal or 3ds Max, and you can even create your own native applications with Graphen. Moving on to this scene, there's a couple of unfinished assets that are rather time-consuming when created manually, and Graphen's simplicity here will help us solve those challenges without writing a single line of code. The first thing I had in mind was creating panels out of this roof, which is just a uniform blob of quads at this point. Back in Graphen, I'll delete my bevel and hard edges node, then hit space to add the panel regions node. This node basically creates panels along the edges of your geometry. For the next one, we want to create some hanging cables out of just a few points, apply some gravity to them, place some lights and generate some cables. Let's start by selecting a bunch of vertices on this metal bar, then back to Graphen we'll feed a Get Selection node to the Uniform Points node, which basically uniformly distributes points based on an input distance. Next, we want to apply some gravity to these points with the Gravity to Points node. We'll connect our Get Selection node to the Holds property, and if we run the graph, you'll see some nice and smooth gravity applied to our points. Now, points are cool and all, but I want some geometry, so I'll just call Curve to Geometry, and that's it. But wait, we forgot about the lights. We want some slightly uniform lights distributed along the cables, and we don't want them to be on the holding points, for example. First, let's add a Get Every Nth Point node then set its distance to something like 5, and check random jitter. So now that we have our points, we can simply feed them to a duplicates on point node, which takes a set of points for positions and rotations, and a list of objects to randomly duplicate and rotate on each point. It took us some time, but this tool is now done forever, and you can share it, sell it, or keep it to yourself. We only have two tasks left, so let's make it quick. First we want to fill those crates with fruits, then we'll add some trash on the ground. For the fruits, we can select one of these crates to store it in our Get Selection node, then back to Maya we'll open the Outliner, find our fruits, and drag and drop them from the Outliner to Graphen's viewport. You'll need to pass them to a new Selection node to process them in Graphen, and from there you can hit Space and write Fill Objects, connect them all together, and voila! I'll skip the other crates, but the process is pretty much the same. For the last tool, we'll just select the ground, create a selection like we did before, then hit space and write plans. There is no node literally called plans, but as you can see we have this point sampler node that's being suggested, and that's because every node in Graphen is rich with tags that help you find the right node without having to guess that something called point sampler might help you scatter plants on a surface. So let's feed our get selection to this node, tweak its density, which is roughly used to calculate the surface coverage. The next step is to feed some plants to another duplicate on point node, give it the positions and rotations from the point sampler, and that's it! We now have some nicely distributed plants and trash on our ground.
With this tutorial, we really wanted to give you a no bullshit approach into how Graphen works. But as you can see, I can just keep adding more and more nodes to my project and the process is still the same. You can find your nodes with artist friendly tags and interact with Maya with just a single click. Now here's the twist. We've been working in Maya only so far, which has an okay viewport at best. But our scene can be sent to any 3D software with literally just one node. Well, two nodes, but you get the idea. Data transfer is an incredibly powerful node that allows you to link any number of softwares to your currently running context, which in this case is Maya, then send the data of your scene straight to your target software. What makes it special compared to any live link or integration out there is the ability to send data back and forth between softwares and the fantastic architecture that gives it 10 to 50 times faster performance than any live link out there. This completely removes the need for manual exports while modeling in your 3D software as your assets can just keep jumping back and forth until you're satisfied with the end result. Here's another twist. What you've seen of Graphen today is just the basic features of the tool and there is so much more that we cannot wait to showcase in the near future. We'll be starting a private beta in January so please go to polygonflow.io and make sure to subscribe to the newsletter. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.